This lesson deals with a second order high pass filter. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting at page 31. Suppose that we interchange the L and C of our second order low pass filter, and again find V out in terms of VN. Well, V out is a voltage divider with VN, so it's going to be SL divided by R plus 1 over SC plus SL times VN, and we'll bring the VN over here. Let's multiply numerator and denominator by SC. Plug it S squared LC, SRC, 1, and then S squared LC. And let's pull out an LC from the numerator and denominator. They'll cancel. I'll get S squared divided by S squared plus RC divided by LC. The C's cancel. I get R over L and then 1 over LC. This too is a form of a general second order high pass filter. And I'm going to define it the following way as H naught S squared divided by S squared plus omega naught over Q naught S plus omega naught squared. I'll call this F sub high pass of S in general. To solve for the three constants of this filter, H naught, omega naught, and Q naught, I can do that by looking at the terms that are here and comparing them back to my transfer function. Again, the easiest one is, is omega naught because it's sitting here by itself. That's going to be equal to the square root of 1 over LC. Now the denominator of this particular high pass filter is the same as our low pass filter. And the reason is that we have the same elements in series, so we have the same characteristic equation. So we'll find that the value of Q naught is actually the same as it was last time, although I can go through the algebra again. It's 1 over R square root of L over C. The term H naught is a thing that multiplies S squared, and that's just equal to 1. Now let's sketch the magnitude versus frequency. Let's take a look at our transfer function for S equals J omega. Let's do it with our general form. We have H naught times S squared. I'm just going to write that as J omega times J omega, because that's one of our forms. And then our denominator is going to be S squared, which is minus omega squared then j omega times omega naught over q naught, and then omega naught squared. Now I need to make this term equal to 1, so let's divide the denominator by omega naught squared. So I'll pull it out in front, I have a 1, and then I have minus the ratio of omega over omega naught quantity squared, and then here I have j omega divided by q naught, and then I've got an omega naught divided by an omega naught squared, so one of those cancels and I get an omega naught in the denominator. I can write this as a product of terms of our forms. This one is our form 1, form 2, form 2, and then our form 8. So let's sketch the four forms. The constant is h naught divided by omega naught squared. Now I don't know the value of that, but usually omega naught's a large number, so it's probably less than 1. So I'm going to show it below the axis, although it could be above. So it's going to be 20 log of the magnitude of this, which is h naught over omega naught squared. Then I have a j omega, which passes through 1 radian per second with a slope of 20 dB per decade. And I've got a second one. And then lastly, I have my form 8, which has an omega naught. Below that, we're at 0 dB per decade, and the value of 0. And then above it, we fall at a rate of 40 dB per decade. Now, I want to add the results. So let's find the regions where the slopes are constant. So in this region, I have a slope of 0, plus 20, plus 20, and then 0. So then that slope of 40 dB per decade. I took an easy point to start my curve out. I did it right here, where all but one curve is 0. So this is 0, this is 0, this is 0 dB. And then lastly, this is the value of 20 log of h naught over omega naught squared, whatever that turns out to be. Then we're going to increase at 40 dB per decade. And then we get to this next region. I have net slope of 20 plus 20 and then minus 40. So it levels out. Now the question is, where does it level out? Well, I can use the fact that I know the slope and I know two frequencies, frequency of 1 radian per second and the value of omega naught. So the rise over the run would be x, this point, minus this point, which is 20 log base 10 of h naught over omega naught squared divided by the log of omega naught divided by 1. And that's got to be equal to plus 40 dB per decade. And now I can solve for x. So x is going to be equal to this term on the other side of the equation. And I'm going to multiply this by this. So I'll get 40 times log base 10 of omega plus this term. And I'm going to write this term here as a sum of terms. So I've got 20 log base 10 of h naught. I've got 1 over omega naught squared. I could write that then as a log base 10 of omega naught to the minus 2 power. So clean this up then, I have 40 times log base 10 of omega naught, plus 20 log base 10 of h naught, and then minus 40 log base 10 of omega naught. So this cancels with this, and I'm left with 20 log base 10 of h naught. For frequencies above omega naught, we're approaching a gain of h naught, which is passing high frequency signals, and as the frequency gets lower than omega naught, then we're decreasing as frequency is decreasing, and eventually we're going to hit minus infinity dB, which is a gain of zero. High-frequency signals are allowed to pass, and low-frequency signals, compared to omega naught, are reduced at the output. And this is why this is called a high-pass filter. We can also see this on the schematic if we go back to page 31. When the frequency is high, 
This is with respect to omega naught. And the capacitor looks like a short circuit. The inductor looks like an open circuit. So with an open circuit, current in here is zero. The voltage across here is also zero. So we go around the loop, you get the rise in voltage is V out, a drop of basically zero, another drop of zero, and then V in. So approaching a gain of one. And of course, we saw this through the algebra that we just did. Let's go to the other extreme. Let's go to very low frequencies. This becomes a short, and this becomes an open. The frequency is decreasing, the signal is decreasing. But we can also predict the slope. So we've got a series combination of elements. Our voltage divider would be most of the voltage is across the highest impedance. It's going to be equal to approximately V in. The current that flows then is going to be V in divided by 1 over SC, or really just times SC. Now this isn't really a short, but a very low impedance, but its value is equal to the current, which is Vn times Sc, times the impedance, which is Sl. Output divided by the input is approaching S squared Lc. Frequency is decreasing. We're also decreasing, but at a rate of 40 dB per decade. These are some of the properties of second-order high-pass filters.